What's up everybody, Alex aka Soldier First Class here, and today we're going to be talking about Final Fantasy 16. I know you're probably shocked, uh, but... The reason I want to talk about this today, and I've actually filmed this video like three times and decided to scrap it because I felt like what I was doing was more of a defense piece than anything. And after rewatching the previously filmed video, I decided to scrap it and we're going to focus more on the positives and less about the discussion around it, the controversy, whatever you want to call it. We're just going to get down to what I think about the game, how I feel about the game, and a little brief summary of, of some of the things going on in the fandom right now. So to start, what is Final Fantasy? Back when Hironobu Sakaguchi came up with this this franchise, uh, this anthology, if you will, of Final Fantasy, the point was is that these would not be direct sequels. They would all have something unique about them, whether it was story elements or whatever. But it, the the Final Fantasy IP would would be a culmination of several things, whether it be noticeable characters, uh, great music, the same overall feel and atmosphere such as chocobos, cactuars, you know, tonberry, stuff like that, whether it was that or summons or it was there was something about Final Fantasy that made it special that separated it from other JRPGs at the time or really revolutionized JRPGs at the time. And so what is Final Fantasy? And the beauty of that question is that that that, that answer is different from everybody. Whether you started with Final Fantasy 1 back on the Nintendo Entertainment System, or you're starting with Final Fantasy 16 on the PlayStation 5, wherever you start in this franchise is special. And the reason that is is because every Final Fantasy fan has a different idea of what Final Fantasy is. Whether it's turn-based combat versus action combat, whether it's an MMO that's highly successful, or it's a single-player title, or if it comes down to chocobos, moogles, and summons. There is, there is something in the Final Fantasy series for everyone, and that's what makes this series so special. So what is it about Final Fantasy 16 that makes it so special for me? A longtime player, I've been playing Final Fantasy since Final Fantasy 7 and Final Fantasy Tactics on PS1. I've played every mainline Final Fantasy game in the series, even spinoffs. Uh, and so... What makes Final Fantasy 16 special to me? Well, it's a lot of things. I love the action combat. I love the music. I love the atmosphere the game puts off. I love its inspirations. I love its... what it contains. Like, everything about Final Fantasy 16 is, has something that I enjoy. There are some things that aren't as great, such as the minimal RPG mechanics, such as equipment, grinding, and stuff like that. I mean, it's it's just... No game is perfect. Every game is going to have its downfalls. That just happens to be one of them. But I think for me, I have been waiting. And I'll, I'll, I'll get a little personal here. I played Final Fantasy Tactics back in the day when it came out. I did not understand its story themes. I just understood the battle system and really enjoyed it. When I got older and I finished the game again and I had this bigger well of knowledge about the themes of the game when it when I finished it at that point I discovered that I loved its darker storytelling and its ability to make me feel emotions for characters that were just little sprites on a screen telling a story and so Final Fantasy 16 for me is special because it evokes those emotions again but in a modern a modern take this game feels like the culmination of Final Fantasy Tactics, 12, Vagrant Story, Heaven's Ward in Final Fantasy 14. It feels like a really impressive mashup of all of those things. And I know there's a lot of comparisons to things like Game of Thrones and stuff like that. And people are saying, oh, it's just like Game of Thrones. It's just like this. It's just like that. But to me, that's you're, you can't be mad that it's inspired by good media. I mean, the game's inspired by things like Godzilla, Game of Thrones. I mean, the icon battles are clearly kaiju battles. So, inspiration is not a bad thing. It, it, to me, it should not be a, a, a negative. 
that this thing is inspired by so so much great media out there. Um, and if you really want to be serious, Final Fantasy Tactics was Game of Thrones before that show even was ever conceptualized. And so the the thing is is that we see these inspirations from Tactics, and I absolutely love those inspirations. Uh, I think it's what makes Final Fantasy 16 special to me is specifically because I've been waiting for that kind of spiritual successor to Final Fantasy Tactics and just have not gotten that. I think the Dark Souls games, the, the Soulsborne series, has given me a taste of that without the massive storytelling of a Tactics game, but the atmosphere is there. So that's why I like things like Berserk, because I like those dark themes. I like the overcoming struggle themes. I like that the hero is not always just overly good or or overly heroic. Like, they have faults, they have emotions, they have character. And that's what Clive represents for me, is like a character that is not afraid to be vulnerable, even though he's supposed to be the hero. I mean, we've seen him cry multiple times in the game over his friends, his family, people he cares about people that he doesn't even know even like they have not made Clive be afraid to be vulnerable as a hero and I think that's what sets him apart from a lot of heroes in media uh, Jill she's very reserved very loving but very reserved she loves Clive it's very obvious uh, but they neither one of them really know how to express themselves in this environment that they found themselves in. And I think that dynamic is really cool. And Sid might be the best Sid we've ever gotten in Final Fantasy. Ralph Innocent has done an amazing job. Ben Starr has done an amazing job as Clive. Like, the character interactions are so great and so powerful that it's hard to find a negative in that aspect of the game. Uh, the combat is phenomenal. Like, I I feel like I am not that good at action games, but I have people coming into my stream chat saying, dude, you're, I struggled with this, you're so good at this, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, the game, I'm not gonna say the game has, has given me a crutch to sit on, but I, I, I am enjoying the combat so much that I wanna get better at it. I want to show off my skills at it. And I don't know if it's because I've spent the last year playing every single Soulsborne game that I've now gotten really good at action combat, I don't know. But what I feel about the combat is that it does a really good job of introducing powers to Clive that don't feel super overpowered, but also make you feel like a god sometimes. Even if, you, even if you're not that good at action games, it makes you feel great about playing the game. And I think any time a gameplay system is introduced, the player should feel something towards it, whether it's that you feel good at it, that you're excited to learn it, that you are excited to master it, whatever it is, you should feel something. And I feel like this combat system does a really good job, and Ryota Suzuki, the Nier team, and the Kingdom Hearts team that helped work on this, all did a really good job of doing that. Uh, their influence is clearly felt throughout the whole thing. Uh, and when it comes to story and characters, Kazuto Yomihiro, who worked on 12 Tactics, Heaven's Ward, and Vagrant Story, did an amazing job. Hiroshi Takai, who worked on Last Remnant, who people have probably never heard of, or if they have, uh, it's only through Last Remnant or Heaven's Ward. Uh, Last Remnant was a pretty good game. It had a really interesting take on turn-based combat, and it was a really good game. And so these guys, whether it be Yoshi P, Koji Fox, Ryota Suzuki, Kazuto Mihiro, Masayoshi Soken, they all have this this acumen, this this ability to make an amazing product, and that's what I think we have here in Final Fantasy 16. I think this is a console seller. I think this is going to bring in a lot of new fans. It already has. I mean, once the demo released, pre-orders skyrocketed. It was amazing to watch. Uh, you've got people like Moist Critical and Asmongold playing this game and loving it and just blowing up about it and making videos and making content and spreading the word. And I think the thing that, that really sets out or s s sticks out to me is that we are witnessing something that we haven't seen, 
I don't personally think, in the JRPG community since Final Fantasy VII on PlayStation 1. When it revolutionized the way people look at JRPGs and, and look at them in a more positive light. And so, I think, to me, Final Fantasy XVI, while maybe not the same impact that Final Fantasy VII had all those years ago, I think will definitely bring Final Fantasy into the next generation as a more positive note than what we've had lately. Because excluding fourteen, which is critically acclaimed MMORPG with a free trial that goes up to Heavensward and level 60, uh... <laughs> Besides Final Fantasy XIV, Final Fantasy has, has been very up and down over the last 10, 15 years. Uh, Final Fantasy XIII has mixed reception. Final Fantasy XV definitely has mixed reception. Uh, a lot of people are saying that Final Fantasy hasn't been great since 9, since 10, some since 12. Uh, I will admit, I personally didn't like 13. I liked 15 but I know it had its faults, and I graded it accordingly. Uh, but 16 to me feels like the step that this company needed to get Final Fantasy back into people's hands and, and back to where people are enjoying it again. And I know it's had its discourse. I know it's had detractors, but every game does. So I'm not really focused on them. I'm focused on how I feel, how people that like me feel, and I don't want it to be an echo chamber, obviously, but I do... I, I used to focus on the negative so much on this channel, and Final Fantasy 16 to me feels like not only a reawakening for the franchise, but a reawakening for me as well. I feel like my comeback to this has been... could not have been more perfectly timed. Uh, I feel like I am reborn a little bit, like the Phoenix, you know? And it, it feels great. It feels great to be excited about Final Fantasy again in a positive way and sharing that positivity with you guys on this channel, on social media, on whatever, with friend groups, everything. Because I've had people that I work with that are not Final Fantasy people that are like, oh, I've heard about Final Fantasy 16, I might pick it up. Or, man, that looks really good, I might pick up a PS5 to play it. Or, you know, I've seen people on Twitter that weren't Final Fantasy fans and saw it and are now picking it up for PS5 or buying PS5 specifically to play it. So I don't think that the impact that Final Fantasy 16 is having right now can be understated. After the demo released, it was trending on Twitter almost every day. Now that the game is out, its characters are trending, the game is trending, it's, it's amazing. And another thing about Final Fantasy 16 that I really want to talk about too is Masayoshi Soken has produced a soundtrack that is on par with anything that Final Fantasy has produced for the most part. I think Final Fantasy 8 and Final Fantasy 7 will still always be very special soundtracks to me, but I think Final Fantasy 16 does something by telling a story with its music. There's a segment, and I won't go into spoilers because I don't want to ruin this moment for anybody, but there's a moment where Clive is having an inner monologue. And I don't know if anybody will notice, I'm sure a lot of people will, but I don't know how many people will notice, but he's having this inner monologue with himself. And you get into a battle with some random enemies along this path that you're following. And the music just stays the same. There's no combat music. There's no boss music. It's just Clive in the moment reflecting on his thoughts. And it tells the story that Clive is not thinking about battle. He's not thinking about the opponent in front of him. He has more important things to worry about than this group of hornets he's fighting or this group of wolves he's fighting or this whatever it is that he's fighting the demons he's fighting on the inside are more than those enemies will ever be. And the music in that segment tells that story so beautifully that that track will stick out in my mind for a long time after I complete this game. I'm only about midway through. I know this game could fall apart in the second half. 
I just don't see it happening. And I'm really excited for that. I'm really excited for the ending. Even though I really don't want to get there because I'm loving this game so much. But I I don't know if there's much more I can say. Uh, the side quests are awesome. I love them. Whether it's unlocking things or just learning about the world of Valley Thea, I absolutely love them. I think they're great. I think Tactics fans will be proud if you haven't played this game yet. I highly recommend it. But uh, I think that's all I have for you today. I, I really wanted to get this message out there and make a video that I was proud of. And I didn't get a chance to do that because I was focusing more on the distract the distractors of the game and not on how I felt. So this is how I feel. Thank you for watching. If you like what you saw, do me a favor and leave a like on the video. I greatly appreciate it. It helps the channel against this terrible al algorithm that we all have to fight against. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're positive about Final Fantasy 16, and even if you're not, you know, we can have discussions. I love it. So, thank you all for watching, and uh, stay tuned for a special message right after this. Hold up, don't think I forgot about you. I'd like to take a second to shout out my new channel members, Terra Queen, Carl Barker, and Newhouse Estates at the 299 tier, and S. Saunders 1122 at the 499 tier. Thank you very much for joining the channel. If you'd like to join the channel membership, not only do you get these post-video shoutouts, you also receive the ability to use emotes in the stream chats and an upgrading badge next to your name in the chat, showing off your membership status. The first tier is cheaper than Twitch, and all tier prices are as listed. $2.99, $4.99, and $9.99. All support is appreciated, but definitely never necessary. Thanks again for joining the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Later, guys.